Oh, the late 1990s, where everyone was optimistic about the world. Peace in Northern Ireland. The end to apartheid South Africa. The end to the Cold War. There was no longer a massive barrier to consumer capitalism spreading throughout the world. Useless consumer products made in the workshops and sweatshops of China and India being consumed in mass because now it felt like there was no longer any purpose to life. And it gave us great 1990s classics like American Beauty, Office Space, and most importantly, Fight Club. Films all about how the middle class increasingly had no meaning to their life. You had a well-paid but boring office job, you had an apartment that looked like everyone else's, and you bought cheap disposable IKEA furniture. And in this world, people were just seeking for meaning, which was enabled by their comfortable existence to ponder on these things. And of course, we could all recognise it for what it was, consumer capitalism mixed with neoliberalism. What a hellscape that was. What purpose did people have? But now we have the 2020s version. No longer are people complaining about their cushy middle class life not giving them enough purpose. No longer are people consuming just, you know, new furniture and stuff. No, it's now um, AI storefront selling you cups. And why are we buying so many of them? Probably to distract us from the hellscape that is neoliberal consumer capitalism, climate change, and the world just being an absolute hellhole. There is no optimism left. This is not the optimistic time of the late 90s. This is nearly the mid-2020s. The future is bleak. How do you distract yourself? How do you form community? We've all been so isolated. Well, you start buying Stanley Cups online and posting about how many you have, and maybe even wrestling over them in supermarkets as they're sold out in four minutes. Fucking loser. I will admit I'm a bit late to this one. Of course, you guys would have seen this going around on Twitter, various social media. A lot of the general public have been exposed to the cult of the Stanley Cup. Just people on TikTok, mainly TikTok, all buying loads of these one type of cup. And they retail, I think, for like $45. So they're not exactly cheap, especially when a lot of like, it seems like teenage girls are buying loads of them. But I just wanted to talk about this today in relation to, as it was clear from the intro, consumer capitalism and our increasing alienation. And the reason I brought up the 90s is a lot of people's like angst with consumer capitalism was like, I am just meaninglessly consuming stuff because I have no purpose to life where contrast that with today is like, I am consuming stuff to distract myself because my life is actually terrible because of my economic conditions being terrible, right? It's a completely different scenario for a lot of people. And I wanna have some fun with this. I don't necessarily wanna hate on everyone who buys into this community, but I do wanna talk about how it reflects our society, our Western society right now. You know, I am a massive hater. I hate most things, I hate most people. But I do realize there is like this power dynamic here where I am like a bigger YouTuber. I'm gonna be showing you like smaller TikTok creators. I don't want anyone to hate on these people. I just wanna talk about it. And yeah, all of that coming up for you today. Please check out my own social medias, especially my Instagram to keep up to date with my personal life a bit better if you care about that stuff. And also check out my Patreon if you wanna support the channel and get access to uh, the Discord server, which I'm actually really happy now. Uh, has a pretty healthy community there. I wanna focus on like the viral video moments first because one of them has been living in my head 
this whole week and I can't stop thinking about it because it's absolutely so funny. So this all started when I saw these clips on Twitter and one of them's from at Who's Lulu Girl, uh, a TikTok creator. And she was posting videos of her waiting in line at 4 a.m. to get a Starbucks Stanley Cup. And I just want to show you some of them. I probably can't play you any music um, because she posts those of copyrighted music. So let's just have a look. And this person also just posts like a lot of content about Stanley Cups and stuff. And that's all, you know, whatever. But of course, you're watching those clips she shared, like the 30 second mad dash. These things just being so popular because why? And obviously it's like an exclusive one, right? It's the Starbucks Stanley Cup. So I get that's part of the marketing. But sometimes I just see stuff like this, like queuing up at 4 a.m. to get a cup. It reminds you of so many things I see. Like, why would you queue for this? Like when you see a queue for like a drive through fast food chain that's just open, that's like four hours. I'm like, what are you doing with your life? Why? How can you justify that? And okay, I will say one thing. I do get like having a little bit of a buzz and excitement for a new product. Like when I was younger, like 15, I used to go to midnight launches for games and they were fun. Like, you know, you talk to people in the line. I had my younger brother who liked games as well. So we'd go together. Last one I went to at my local Blockbuster, I bought, um, Battlefield 3, went home and then I played Battlefield 3 at midnight. But that's the thing, right? I went to get a game early. This is before digital storefronts really took off. So you couldn't really buy this game online and play it at midnight. So when I got this game, I went home and played it. I had the game to play early, like essentially a day early, right? So in my head, I can justify queuing. And also I didn't really actually queue. It literally like, there was like a, a tiny little queue and they served everyone and we left. Another time I did something like this is for the PS4. I remember I was 18, saved up a lot of money from work. PS4 was sold out everywhere on Amazon, sold out everywhere on basically every storefront. HMV, my local HMV, they said they have like maybe five. And then I go queue up at like 6 a.m. The store doesn't open until like, I think 8.30. Uh, I get to the front and then my card declines because there was something about like my account being for younger people. I couldn't pay 500 pounds at once. Had to wait until... Um, I think 9.30 for the bank to open, take out this money. Thankfully, I still had it. And yeah, that was like a, an experience I always remember, right? And that's me kind of engaging in consumerism. I, I love video games. I'm happy I did that because otherwise I wouldn't have had one for like a month, maybe more. So I do get it to an extent, right? But as you're listening to me tell that story, you realize it's kind of different when you're queuing up for a games console or a video game, but you then go home and play and then probably play for like, 50 plus hours over the amount of time you spend rather than buying one cup or two because that's the limit when you already have the exact same thing but it's a different color so again i get consumer hype i get marketing hype you guys could say well why didn't you just wait for the ps4 you didn't need it right then did you why didn't you just wait for battlefield you didn't need it at midnight i get it right i didn't of course i didn't i was also a kid i like this stuff this person's 18 so i'm not really judging in that way it's just more so what the actual product is. I just don't understand queuing for that at all because it is really disposable at the end of the day, especially if you're buying so many of them. Now, something I didn't realize, and this is a good point, why these are so popular on TikTok specifically and why it's been such a massive success on TikTok is because of something called Water Talk. Now, you guys might know this, or you might not. There's two videos by Curtis Connor and Tiffany Ferg. Go subscribe to both of them. You probably don't know Tiffany Ferg as much as Curtis Connor, so definitely give them a follow. But they both made videos about this. Curtis Connor's one was, of course, more going for comedy. But I really like Tiffany Ferg's one because she talked about all of like the social class dynamics of this. And to give you a short rundown of it, basically it's a community of mainly women, but not just women, of people who make water into like fun drinks with different kinds of powders and syrups and everything. Started a conversation with 
this is even water anymore, but a lot of the stuff I put in is sugar-free. It's not like terrible for you, despite the fact that it looks like it's terrible for you. It was just interesting learning about it. But of course, what do these people drink their drinks in? Massive Stanley Cups, right? And because Water Talk was very popular, Stanley Cups became synonymous with Water Talk. And then that's how it became like a massive thing on TikTok. I'm sure I'm also missing another facet there. But at the same time, I don't and will never use TikTok properly. So I don't know about that. And also it was funny to watch Curtis and Tiffany both try these drinks and thinking they're both pretty disgusting. But you know, Americans, you might have tolerance for sweeter things because everything in your society is just stuffed full of sugar and corn syrup. But that's how this thing kind of took off as like this consumer cult. But as I was going through TikTok even more, it just got to like bizarre levels, some of the stuff I was seeing. Like I was thinking, how how do you need so many of these? Why? Why do you need all of these? And I get it, it's like an aesthetic thing. It is like a social media thing. In my opinion, a lot of it's to do with like vanity, showing off. And of course they're, they're $40, these things, right? And although that's not like loads of money, it's quite a lot of money for a water bottle, essentially. Like, this is my water bottle. It's cost me £10. I've used it for like nearly a year. I had another one just like it, but my friend stepped on it and broke it when we were playing football tennis. And in this fervor around Stanley Cups, as we saw the mad rush, you actually have people fighting and stealing Stanley Cups from shops. Like, that is how bad this has got. And this is the clip I was talking about, right? So it's all kicking off at some shop because everyone wants these Starbucks Stanley Cups. And then this dude goes behind the counter and he just grabs a box of them and he starts walking out. And obviously, absolutely insane to like potentially go to jail for stealing cups. But I have to talk about this. I absolutely love how he tries to break through security. Um, what it really reminds me of is like a step in rugby. And I've actually kind of... <laughs> And I'm watching this right now. I've kind of done this before. Like, you try and confuse the defender about, like, <laughs> which way you're going to go. I used to do it in touch rugby a bit. But I do love how he's treating it like he's in he's in the NFL or he's in rugby union. And then thankfully he gets tackled. But I've been thinking about this clip all week. Like, how insane is this, ca is this consumer cult that this guy is literally not only stealing Stanley Cups from behind the counter, he's literally acting like he's a prop in rugby union trying to break through <laughs> trying to break through a defensive line like oh my god it's so good but still to me i'm like how this could only exist in my mind in like america and i know we've all been infected by consumer capitalism the uk is no stranger as america's younger brother for a lot of this stuff but still with a lot of these things i'm still like that's an american thing like stanley cups and also they're so massive as well i didn't realize the size of them until i saw an English person test them out because there's an article I read somewhere, I forget where. And it was like, this is the size of a plane window. It's so impractical to carry around. I'm just like, how has this thing become something people are willing to fight security at a mall over? Is that where we're just at? And like I said, there's various different factors. And a lot of it is like in the background. People don't realize how consumerist capitalism and neoliberalism is actually affecting their brains and how other things like the economy and the lack of identity really factor into this. Just talking about like water talk and talking about Stanley Cups, basically for me, what it symbolizes, if we're gonna get into like a bit of, you know, political analysis, is especially in America, I think why this becomes an American thing is because of how America it is designed. Like there's another trend I wanna make a video on. Let me know if you guys um, wanna see this. I saw a lot of videos in America, it's like I am 30 or I'm 30 something and I have no friends. And a common factor in these stories I was listening to is I had to move away for work. I had to move away to get married. I had to move away to be with my wife's like sick family. And it's just something that happens that's very common in countries like America and even European countries sometimes is like people move away for work. So you move away from your community. So for example, I live in London. I was born in London. I still live relatively near to where I went to school, where I used to live and stuff. Uh, most of my friends have only recently moved, but they've only moved more inwards towards central London for like work and flats and stuff like that, right? So it's not like we're so far away I can never see them again. And they're still like my friendship group because we still live basically in the same city that we all grew up in. So I'm nearly 30, I'm 28 now. 
and I basically have the same friends I had when I was both five years old and also like 11, 12 years old because secondary and primary school friends and stuff. And that's all really nice. But if you live in somewhere like America, which is absolutely massive and you're moving around so much for work, then of course you're going to quickly lose touch with your local community from birth, but also like the friends you make along the way, unless you live in somewhere like New York or London. But even then we're all being priced out of living here so we're going to have to leave. Like, for example, I don't see much of a future for myself in London. So one day, maybe I'll be making the video. I'm 35 and I have no friends because I would have moved country or I would move out of the city and stuff. And as people get older, you can see how that happens. I know it seems stupid, but I think when you lose your community and you lose like this identity, you're trying to cling on to something that will give you an identity. And like with Fight Club and part of the messaging of Fight Club is you're not your job you don't get your identity from your job. So if your identity isn't your community, it's not your standing in the community, it's not how you help the community, it's not your job, then what is it? Is it your hobbies? What if you don't really have many hobbies? What if you don't have many hobbies that are very social? Like your hobbies are consuming stuff by yourself. Like who even are you? And in that people seek community. And that's why I don't wanna hate on this too much because you seek community. And I know it seems absolutely ridiculous, but the community of water talk or stanley cups in that you're all talking about this one thing that you are united by in your love for like <laughs> these giant cubs but it's not about the cups for a lot of people right it's just about like i want to be involved in something greater than myself and because of neoliberalism which incentivizes us to break from our community and destroy each other to reach the top they replace that with consumerism and consumer capitalism. Now your identity isn't about who you are. And because people's labor are so disconnected from their environment in that we all work bullshit jobs which don't affect anything. Like we're not doctors for our local community. We don't work in the local car factory which makes cars for the community. We don't work at the local, I don't know, garment factory which makes clothes for the community. We're so disconnected. So therefore all we are is the stuff we buy. And what we buy is who we are. So I'm not in the Stanley Cup community because I don't buy that, right? So I could be in some sort of other community. I could be in like the video game community. Like we have subreddits and stuff. I would say that's a bit different because it's art. It's not about products. But I think the Stanley Cup is a good symbol because it's, it's so meaningless. Like what do you even talk about with that? Just the color? It's so basic. It's just something you drink from. And that's why I think Water Talk's a nice compliment to it because it's like, how do I spice this up? How do I make the Stanley Cup stuff like more special or more interesting, I guess, I add something to it. And I do think that's like worth talking about because to a lot of us, we're like, what, what has society become that communities are springing up around Stanley Cups so much so people are camping out to buy them and are fighting people for them. And I think it just is generally an American thing because of the increasing alienation of that society, which does exist in many others, but I think it's very heightened in America. So you just become like, the stuff you buy and that's the only way to form community is talk to people online about the stuff you buy something i want to talk about a little bit just to end this segment is um i don't think this will last because in consumer capitalism there's always something new and trendy so i saw a report recently about something called an owala which is like a similar kind of quencher tumbler thing and then um i actually watched a funny TikTok today, which was the Stanley Cup meeting all these other cups from the past, which used to be like very popular. What is this place? Well, look who finally got downgraded. Welcome to the back of the cup cabinet, bro. Is this like cup hell? It's an inevitable fate for every trendy overpriced cup. Oh, I was supposed to last forever. Oh, Stan the man. She had to fight a lady at Target for me. Wow, that sounds like my neck of the woods. Oh, this, is, this is a mistake. I, I don't belong here. So you think you're better than us? Yes, I, I'm double wall insulated. Okay, well, same. With a handle. I I have a handle, I, th I think. And I'm shiny. Oh, well, you've never seen what they do to us on Etsy. Well, I certainly know that I am the most expensive cup that she's ever had. I think that's really telling and also what always happens. It's very hard to have a product and a business that stays around forever. And of course, even in consumer capitalism, where everything is designed to be disposable, if these products are well-made, which apparently they are quite well-made, only the real hardcore fans are gonna keep buying different colors because once you buy one, like myself, I bought one of these, why would I buy another one? A lot of people just want something to drink out of, right? And I can understand maybe buying two because you don't wanna mix maybe something more milky like a coffee, constantly washing that up with water where you don't have to wash up as much. I understand that, but there has to be this kind of limit. 
So what do the Stanley Cup community look to next? Is it just different colors forever? Or is it new products which evolve and expand on what this cup is? And if Stanley doesn't do it quick enough, then someone else is going to do it. So I don't think the Stanley success is gonna continue. And I think one day in like five years, people are gonna watch this video and be like, remember when everyone lost their mind about a Stanley Cup? But like I said, it's not about the cup. It's about alienation, it's about neoliberalism, which alienates us, and it's about having no identity in consumer capitalism because for multiple reasons, like a lot of you, you work too hard, you work too long, and you don't get paid enough, but also you're exhausted afterwards. And if you don't like your job especially, and you don't wanna be known for your job, you're not gonna identify as I am just this, right? So you're gonna pivot, you're gonna get away from that, but also you're exhausted, you might be alienated from a community. So what is your identity? And you might seek that out online. And I guess for me, my identity now is more the cavernacle than it is myself, because more people know me as this than know me in my real life, as I'm becoming more alienated because of my own local community and friendship group going separate ways. Like, am I gonna veer more into that? Like, this is just who I am now, I'm just this, I am just YouTuber now. And if you're not someone like me who has that as your job, which you're proud of and you like, then you might seek that online. No, I am not X worker. I don't have anything else. I am part of the Stanley Cup community. And maybe they don't see it like that, but it's clear stuff like this does fill that kind of void. And you seek this community online. And like I said, it's not about the cup. It's about engaging with people. It's about making that human connection. It's about feeling like you're a part of something. And that's what these people would feel like as part of this cup community. So the cup is kind of irrelevant, but it's just sad now that we have to design these communities around not a shared love of something organic, it's from what we buy. And that's my overall point to this video, but let me know what you guys think down in the comment. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.